How's it going, y'all? Titans Fan920. Today we're back at it. Not MTGA standard this time. Um, well, there is. We're just going to talk about a deck, though. So it's a little bit different than what I usually do here. I usually do gameplay videos, all that kind of stuff. We have the Mythic Invitational Qualifier this weekend I'll be playing in. Uh, Gruel Monsters will be my deck of choice here. And I know, you know, I kind of shared this on Twitter yesterday, and it's kind of blown up. A lot of people have shared it. Um, it's kind of neat to be on Twitch all day and watching other people play my deck, so that's pretty cool. But uh, a lot of people report and having success with the list, and that makes me pretty happy. But I wanted to kind of just show where I'm at the list now before the tournament. Don't expect to have any changes here before the tournament since it is Saturday, um, Thursday while I'm recording this. But I uh, basically just want to show like my sideboarding guide here, kind of how I'm doing everything. And again, this is how I do it. That doesn't mean it's the right way to do it. There can be more better card choices possibly. But so far, I mean, the deck's still working for me. I uh, played a few more games. Um, one, I'm at 12, 17 now. So we're releasing the numbers. We, got th we started at 99. Um beat another Yorion deck to get into the numbers, so that was pretty cool. But let's uh, take a look at this list here and talk about the matchups that we can expect to see here in the qualifier and how we're going to sideboard against that. So overall, everybody knows the deck. You're trying to, you have your four Grazers, your four Raptors, and you're really trying to accelerate up these bigger creatures here. Um, so the hope is that either on turn one, play Grazer, or turn two, play Raptor. If you don't have either of those in your opening hands, then it's usually probably not going to be good enough to keep. Uh, but if you can, we now play two Domri in the main deck, and that was something that wasn't in there before. Going from Grazer to Domri is really, really nice because you can either have five mana available for the next turn, or you can use this Grazer if it's a, if it's a one three and five something down in aggressive matchups and get that out of there, which is really good. Um, but just another way to ramp into things here. We're up to three of Embercleave now. I took the Ronus out, which may make a lot of people sad because people were kind of stoked to see Ronus, but in the end, Embercleave is just a little bit better. Um, I don't doubt Ronus is a card, and I do think it's still a good card. It's just Embercleave is a little better. But let's take some look at this matchup and see what we got here. So Jeskai Yorion is the first one. Um, I'm going to be reading this off my screen over here. But uh, for Jeskai Yorion, I put in two Graft Digger's Cage, one Cinder Vine, and two Nullhide Ferrix. And I take out two Ember Cleave, a Domri, and two Grazer. Now the two Grazer, honestly, just because I don't know what else to really cut. But I need to cut something. A lot of times, you know, Grazer's great on one, but otherwise I think it kind of sucks. Uh, the two Ember Cleave, we cut down to one of those in those matchups. Because a lot of times, like, the damage comes from your creatures and not, like, just a big old Embercleave. And with they have Teferi and things like that out there, it makes Embercleave kind of awkward. Uh, so you're really trying to get things like your Shifting Ceratops down and accelerate and do that kind of thing. So that's why we have that. And we put in uh, two Graft Digger's Cage. For the, this is for the Jeskai Yorion only. Um, we have three Graft Digger's Cage. But I feel like that's a little bit a little bit much just for one card to worry about. Because Luke is the only thing that really cares about the Graft Digger's Cage. So we bring in two of those. Um, one of Cinder Binds is really nice because we get to ping them every time they cast it on Creature Spell. But also, say if they're trying to Luka, and a lot of times it's either a token, like the, the Birth of Melitis Artifact token, for example. Uh, we can take that, we can blow it up with in response, but the Cinder Binds there and be good to go if they mess that up. And finally, the two of Nolod Ferrix, it's just a big, dumb creature. Um, it gets Shadow of the Sky, you still draw a card, but it's a 6 6 hexproof. So if they want to deal with it, they're going to have to like kind of go out of their way to deal with it. It can attack through Yorion. Um, it's just a big creature, and you'll notice here as we go throughout this, um, I end up signing this in a lot. It's been a lot better than I thought it would be. So that's how I deal with these Luka Yorion lists. So far, I think we're like 6-0 or 7-0 against the Yorion list, which is a bit surprising to me, honestly. But we just have a lot of ways of getting at him and putting that pressure on him and getting through. So that's the sideboard for Jeskai Luka, uh, Jeskai Luka, Yorion, all that kind of thing. Once again, two Graft Digger's Cage, one Cinder Vine, two Ferrix, take out two Ember Cleave, one Domri, two Grazer. So next up is Blue White Yorion. It's like Blue White Control mostly, but they play, have to have to play Yorion. A little bit less sideboarding for that one. We bring in one Cinder Vines, two Ferrix. All we take out for that one is two Thrash and one Ember Cleave. Um, and some of you may ask why we keep the Thrash in for the Jeskai Yorion. But again, like when they have that Luka and doing all that kind of stuff there, you really want that instant speed answer to answer what they're doing um, in response to when they try to go get Agent and Treachery. So Thrash is important there. But in this matchup, Thrash doesn't have a lot of targets. Um, they have Shark Typhoon, and obviously it's really good there against that, but you don't want to have this card in just for Shark Typhoon. And as far as Yorion goes, it's a big creature, but we have plenty of creatures you can kind of get out of the way and attack through it. Um, the Stone Cold Serpent has protection. Gem Razor, can, if it's on the Stone, Stone Cold Serpent especially, you can get through there. Quest and Beast trades with it. Shifting Ceratops has protection from it. Um, just a lot of ways to get through there with it, so we don't need that as much. So if you blew out Yorion, bring in the Cinder Vine, bring in the two Ferrixes. Just take out the one Ember Cleave, two Thrash, and then call it a day. Last on the Yorion list here, we have the Elemental Yorions. And I know there's plenty of other Yorion lists out there. This is what I'm going to look at for these ones. Elemental Yorion, not a lot of sideboarding here at all. I bring in two Cloythus if they're playing Euro, just because I want to get that out of the way. But also, they have Cavalier of Thorns and things like that, so the Cloythus can kind of take, take care of good cards they get back when you kill Cavalier of Thorns. 
So the only thing we take out there is two gem raisers. They play next to zero artifacts or enchantments. So it's a four mana four four that doesn't do as much as the other big drop center deck here. So I think that's kind of the best way to go is just take out the two gem raiser, bring the two Koythus call today. Um, one deck I expect to see a lot, honestly I hope to, because we have a great matchup against it, is Mono Red Obosh. We sideboard a lot for this one in the sideboard. We bring in two Bone Crusher Giants, three Flame Sweep, and again, two Ferrix. Um, when they have a 3-5 or 6-6 six, six Ferrix and attack through an Obosh, it's also just a dumb hexproof, hexproof creature that's going to be able to block about anything they do. Um, it's just a really good creature there. Two Bone Crusher Giants, the Stomp's really nice to kill most of their creatures, and then you have a 4-3 body to hang back and block things. Nicely done there. As far as we take you out for this one, this is a little bit hard. Oh, and the three flame sweep. It's three flame sweep. Like, obviously, we put that in there. Um, we take out the four shifting ceratops. Of all the four drop creatures here, it's not quite as good. Um, and some people may want to think Gem Razor, but Gem Razor actually blows up an annex, which is just really good value to get a big creature and blow up their annex. Uh, we also take out the two domries. Not, they go wide on you pretty fast. So, like, if you're going to play this, more than likely, if you try to do the fight mode, it's going to die the next turn anyway. So, it's not super spectacular there. We need to make one more cut, so we take out one more Spellbreaker. So for this matchup, two Bone Crusher Giant, three Flame Sweep, two Ferris come in, four Shifting Ceratops, two Domri, and one Spellbreaker come out. So one of the more difficult matchups for the list is the Lure Sacrifice decks. I think any kind of creature-based deck will just have a lot, kind of hard time with these, but definitely it's not unwinnable. So for what we bring in for these, three Grafdigger's Cage, obviously, uh, two Cloythus, three Flame Sweep, and two Bone Crusher Giants. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cards siding in. As far as what we take out here for this one, uh, four Stone Cold Serpent, two Domri, and four Spellbreaker. So the Stone Cold Serpents are just really bad in this matchup because, for one, they're just a little bit slow in getting big, but also if you do make them big, they just claim the Firstborn and sack it. So you really can't do much of the Stone Cold Serpent in these matchups. You want to get those out for sure. Uh, two Domri, again, the fight's not very relevant in this case. A lot of times they want their stuff to die, and then it just kind of gets killed later on, so it's not super good there. And finally, Spellbreaker, just because... If a lot of times you're not trying to 3-3 three, three and attack with them in here, the trample on Spellbreaker is good. But if you just take the time to put, make this, uh, put the 1-1 one, one counters on there and make it a 4-4, four, four, they're still able to just take it the next turn and sack it anyway. Um, it's just kind of, it doesn't line up well with what we're trying to do against the deck. So I try to stick with my creature's power 4 and above there, or convert a mana cost 4 and above there instead. Uh, we keep the Raptor in there because it reduces the cost of everything, so I think that's a necessity. But Spellbreaker, Domri, and Serpent come out of there. Um, but Graph Digger's Cage can shut down a lot of what they're doing down. Koythus one by one, just eating up the stuff out of the graveyard is really nice. And then finally Flame Sweep, Bone Crusher Giant, just good damage to get rid of most of their stuff there. It's pretty good. So after sideboard, I do feel pretty confident about their deck, uh, our matchup with the deck. But the game ones can be kind of, you know, kind of a struggle if we can't trample through and get that damage in when we need to. So the matchup I'm not going to play much at all here. I've actually only got to play once with this list, it's Cycling. And it beat me, so I'm 0-1 for Cycling, so... I, I, I'm curious about this one because I feel like if they get the turn one Ferrix or the Fox, which they always have, um, it gets kind of rough because they can even outsize us, which is crazy. But uh, that and the rest of you are making a bunch of tokens. If we can't find our trampling effects, it gets pretty rough. But what we bring in for them, three Flame Sweep and two Soul Guide Lantern. Soul Guide Lantern, absolute house against them because it's able to exile all their graveyards so they can't seem to flare you. Because that's the main way they beat you and everything. If you can control the battlefield and get a Soul Guide Lantern down, you're probably going to win. Uh, three Flame Sweep because we've got to worry about the Valiant Rescuer and all their board. Uh, a lot of times it's not going to be able to hit the Fox, but everything else will usually die in their deck to the Flame Sweep, so it's pretty good there. As far as what we take out, we take out one Domri because sometimes we still want to be able to fight that Fox and be able to ramp up a little bit and all that kind of stuff. Um, we also take out four Gem Razor because, again, they don't have any artifacts for enchantments I don't think they ever play. So four, four Domri, one Ra or sorry, one Domri, four Gem Razor come out, two Soul Guy Lantern, three Flame Sweep come in. Last matchup we'll talk about here, Team of Reclamation. Um, this one feels really good for us most of the time, which is surprising because I hate playing against the deck. But just main deck Gem Razors, main deck Ceratops, you have so many good ways to deal with them. And most of their targeted removal is Scorching Dragonfire, which does 3 damage. So I've, I've been in many games where I've seen them have to double Scorching Dragonfire or something to kill it, or Scorching Dragonfire and Flame Sweep. Um, it just, the, the removal is really awkward for what we're trying to do, and that's why I like this bigger higher to the ground gruel deck because I feel like the tr more traditional lower to the ground gruel decks just kind of get murdered by a team of wreck. So against team of wreck, we bring in one cinder vines, two cloythus, and again, two nullhide ferrix. Uh, they don't have many ways to deal with the six, six hex proof. Uh, the part of what we take out here, we take out four marauding raptor and one cleave. Taking out raptor is a field bad because it's really important and vital to be able to ramp up to your big stuff there. But 
I just can't remember many games when it's not got Brazen Bard, it's not got Aether Gusted, or it's not got Scorching Dragon Fired. It just always feels weird and awkward in place. So I'd much rather have the Grazers there, try to hit that first land to ramp up, and then go from there to our bigger stuff. The Ember Cleave, a lot of times I just have so many answers for it at that point that I don't want to have all three of them. I think two is plenty fine in this situation. Definitely want to keep in the Thrash in this matchup because if there's one deck that can abuse the uh, um, Shark, Tynate, or Shark Typhoon and get you Shark Tokens there, Thrash is the way to deal with that at instant speed. They also play Night Pack Ambusher, which again, Thrash deals with. So the two main reasons they even play Thrash in the deck both show up in this Team Reclamation match, so you absolutely want to keep that card in there. So that's what I got. This is the list. Um, I will be posting my results. I'll be recording for the MIQ. Um, that happens the Saturday, which is when this video goes up. So the day you see this, I'll be playing this this deck in the in the competition. Uh, even if we go over and lose every game, I'll still upload it so we can see how it goes. So it's going to be three rule videos in a row. So if you don't like rule, I apologize for that. But a lot of people have taken off of this list. A lot of people have done pretty good with it. And everybody seems to be pretty excited about it. So I hope this is something you all enjoy. Uh, again, I don't usually do these kind of videos, but... I feel like with everybody wanting to play this deck, just being able to help out, get my sideboard tips for it. If you're somebody else wanting to play it, go for it. And again, maybe it's not the perfect sideboard, but the sideboard's working for me so far. So this is what we got. Hope y'all enjoy. Thank y'all for watching. Love ya. Goodbye.